Good afternoon. I just returned from a week-long trip to the Middle East uh, to meet with our allies and our partners there. We had some important conversations about ISIS, the security threat in that region and those around the world. But I'll tell you, it is really amazing how our politics has followed so closely overseas. I was asked about it everywhere I went. I'm also aware that while I was overseas, uh, there was more speculation that someone other than the current candidates will emerge as our party's nominee. I want to put this to rest once and for all. As you know, I have stayed out of this race and I have remained neutral. As chairman of the Republican convention, my job is to ensure that there is integrity in the process, that the rules are followed by the rule book. That means it is not my job to tell delegates what they should do. But I've got a message to relay today. We have too much work to do in the House to allow this speculation to swirl or to have my motivations questioned. So let me be clear. I do not want nor will I accept the nomination for our party. So let me speak directly to the delegates on this. If no candidate has a majority on the first ballot, I believe that you should only choose from a person who has actually participated in the primary. Count me out. I simply believe that if you want to be the nominee for our party, to be the president, you should actually run for it. I chose not to do this. Therefore, I should not be considered, period, end of story. I just think it would be wrong to go any other way. So let me say again, I am not going to be our party's nominee. But I'll also be clear about something else. Not running does not mean I'm going to disappear. When I accepted this speakership, I did so on the condition that I would do things differently than they had been done in the past. For one, I made it clear that this would be a policy and communications-focused speakership. And secondly, I made clear last year in 2015, before the primaries even started, that we would be putting together a policy agenda and offer a clear choice to the American people. That's what I told my colleagues I would do, and that is exactly what I have been doing. Look, there is a big debate going on right now. It's about what kind of country we're going to be. As Speaker of the House, I believe that I have not just an opportunity, but an obligation to advance that debate. As I've talked about this before, politics today, it tends to drift toward personality contests, not policy contests. Insults get ink more than ideas. But we still owe it to the country to show what we would do if given a mandate from the people. We have an obligation to give a clear picture a clear choice to talk about solutions. That's why I've been giving speeches. That is why I've been communicating a vision for what our party and our country can be. And that is why I'm going to continue doing just that. I believe we can once again be an optimistic party that is defined by our belief in the limitless possibility of our people. We want a party defined by solutions, by being on the side of the people. We want to take our principles and apply them to the problems of the day. Embrace free enterprise and reject cronyism. Promote upward mobility. Provide solutions to those who are stuck in fighting poverty. Offer a tax code that rewards work, not the well-connected. A strong and focused military. A health care system that promotes choice and flexibility. A secure border. A government that allows people to fulfill their American idea. You know this great idea that the condition of your birth doesn't determine the outcome of your life. That's the kind of an agenda we are building right now. And that is the kind of an agenda that we are going to be releasing in the next few months. This job provides a platform to communicate a conservative vision for our country. And I am intent on using it. And I am intent on using this platform not for me, but for my House colleagues and for those who believe that conservatism holds the keys to a confident America. This is a critical role that has to be played, and I am in a position to play that role, to prepare for the fall campaign with our eventual nominee that gives a clear and compelling choice to our fellow citizens so that we can earn the mandate we need to get things right, to fix our problems, and to get our country back on track.
Thank you. Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, a lot of people said, hey, this is exactly what he said about becoming speaker, and then he ended up taking the job. What do you say to people that are continuously skeptical of you and said, you're just going to back into this? Just like apples and oranges. Uh, Luke, those are apples and oranges. Being Speaker of the House is a far cry from being President of the United States, specifically because I was already in the House. I'm already a congressman. I was asked by my colleagues to take a responsibility within Congress that I've already been serving in from the one that I had. That is entirely different than getting the nomination for President of the United States by your party without even running for the job. So completely non sequitur comparison in my book. Mr. Speaker, Ryan, there's a two-part question here. So what happens if this goes to a second ballot since you're in charge? And what happens? Who prevents them? You as the chair of the convention from if somebody from the floor and you're adhering to the rule book, puts your name. Or I, I, your name I, I, do, I will not allow my name. I, I am opposed to my name being put in place. And I would look, I the Rules Committee, the rule let me ask you your second question. The Rules Committee, which is assembled by the delegates, will decide what the rules are. But I would encourage those delegates to put in place a rule that says you can only nominate someone who actually ran for the job. So does that mean that you think that... The three candidates remain. Uh, I'll leave it up. To, I'll leave it up to to the de delegates at the rules committee to decide that. I just think, honestly, I really believe, if you want to be president, you should run for president. And when we select a nominee, we should be selecting among people who actually ran for the job. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.